create an SSH user who only has permission to access specific folders. I installed SSH, but I found if I use my original account to log in to Ubuntu, it has too many permissions. I want to constrain the user to only have permissions for specific folders in Ubuntu. How can I configure such a user? This is simple. Just create a new user with its home directory set to the one you need him to have access to. This command must be run under sudo or in root shell. This will create a user restricted underscore user, the directory slash restricted slash directory and then permissions on the directory will be set so the user can write to it. It won't have an ability to write to any other directory by default. If you have the directory already, you can run a user command with a no create home option appended and set permissions manually, also with root privileges, like If you need to make even world writable directories unaccessible for this user, there are two variants. One, if you want to provide an interactive shell session to the user, then consider following this manual on creating a crude jail in your slash restricted slash directory. After that, add the following to your sshd underscore config. Two, if you only need him to copy files between his endpoint of connection and your host, everything is much easier. Add these lines at the end of your sshd underscore config. Then comment out the subsystem sftp slash use of slash lib slash open slash sftp server by placing a hash hash sign at the start. After restarting your SSH server, it does not kill interactive sessions on restart, so it is safe even if you misconfigured something, also, does not close your running session before you have checked that you are still able to log in, everything should work as intended. The easiest way to create restricted user that cannot wander off the given directory, for example, to the upper directory etc., and have a limited slash picked set of command to use, is to use a restricted shell. Ref. This URL. First, create a symlink called rash, run as root user. Then just create a normal user with this restricted shell, and set its home dear to the desired folder. Even without the restricted shell, if you explicitly do not add this user to sudoers list, or any special groups, then it will be limited by default. With the restricted shell, the following are disallowed or not performed. Changing directories with CD Setting or unsetting the values of shell, path, env or bash underscore env. Specifying command names containing slash. Specifying a file name containing a, as an argument to the built-in command. Specifying a file name containing a slash as an argument to the p option to the hash built-in command. Importing function definitions from the shell environment at startup. Parsing the value of shell ops from the shell environment at startup. Redirecting output using the ngt, ngt semicolon vertical bar, and lt semicolon ngt, ngt semicolon and amp, and amp semicolon ngt, and ngt semicolon ngt, redirect ion operators. Using the exec built-in command to replace the shell with another command. Adding or deleting built-in commands with the F and D options to the enable built-in command.
using the enable built-in command to enable disabled shell built-ins. Specifying the P option to the command built-in command. Turning off restricted mode with set plus R or set plus O restricted. These restrictions are enforced after any startup files. Moreover slash optionally, to restrict the user to a limited slash picked set of command to use, you can create a bash underscore profile read only to that user, with and some link whatever commands you allows into the slash bin folder to that user. Etc. HGH I want to constrain the user to only have permissions for specific folders in Ubuntu. This sounds like you want to select the folders this SSH user will have permission to. So, you would not necessarily want to include all world-readable directories on the server. This is difficult to impossible to achieve with SSH users that you provide with some sort of interactive shell, so that they can execute commands. There were several attempts for this, for Bash, Skimly, RSSH, all no longer considered secure enough and mostly abandoned. So, instead of providing an interactive shell, you could provide your SSH user with a single command that allows managing files inside your specified directories, and nothing else. There are several options, depending on which network file access protocol you want to use. Option 1, SFDP via SSH. Using force command internal SFTP, as already explained in the answer by White Accord. Option 2, Persync via SSH. Persync is a faster and more powerful network file access protocol, but not as end user friendly as SFTP. In other words, the GUI options for Persync are quite limited. Free Linux options, free Windows option, commercial cross platform option. To set this up, follow the recipe below. It is a variant of the technique mentioned in the Resync One Man page under using Resync Daemon features via a remote shell connection. It is sometimes useful to use various features of an Resync Daemon, such as name modules, without actually allowing any new socket connections into a system, other than what is already required to allow remote shell access. Resync supports connecting to a host using a remote shell and then spawning a single use daemon server that expects to read its config file in the home gear of the remote user. The difference is only, we don't spawn a single use Resync server side but use a permanently running Resync server there that is only available to local host connections. For the variant that spawns a single use Resync in all further details, please see this gist archive.org version as a backup. The instructions below restrict SSH access to the command, and see localhost 873, that is, forwarding the connection to the local resync server. In contrast to any approach without resync, access management can be done with the powerful features of resync, while SSH transport security protects the otherwise unencrypted resync connection. Configure slash etc slash resync.conference to start resync as a daemon with access to files on the server that you want to expose and with the daemon listening on the local host interface only use 127.0.0.1 rather than 0.0.0.0 and slash etc slash resync.conference you will also have to reference a secrets file the secrets file should contain a line with the required username and password as a username column password pair. Also do a chmod 600 for your secrets file, otherwise, your sync will refuse to use it. For example, create a normal SSH user username on your server.
Remove shell access from that new SSH user by adding a single SSH key with options to that user's .ssh slash authorize underscore keys file. Explanation of the options. Command equals slash bin slash nc local host 873. Force the command executed after login by the SSH user to be a netcat call to local host port 873, basically forwarding their sync connection via SSH. No port forwarding. Don't allow port forwarding. No agent forwarding. Don't allow agent forwarding. No X11 forwarding. Don't allow X11 forwarding. If you want to offer password based login rather than keys, you can adapt the instructions to use force command rather than the key options field in tilde slash dot ssh slash authorize underscore keys. Connect from your local machine to the SSH server like this, using the so-called resync daemon notation, column column, together with the rsh equals ssh option. If you are looking just to hide the contents of folders from a user, e.g. the home folder names of other users, just set the permissions to 701. The owner can do anything, everyone else can only enter the folder, but can't list its contents or change anything unless they have pseudo permissions. I do this for clients. I make sure the top folder is root owned, but with 701 permissions, and each subfolder is owned by who I want to be able to manipulate. I just then created a link in their home folder to the new restricted folder. They can see the path if they cd, but have no idea what other files or folders are there. Hi.